Again, uh, the, the next speaker is uh, <clears throat> Len Denais. His research is in uh, uh, stress, healthy aging, and physical exercise at the Stirling University and also uh, uh, very active uh, in uh, Belgium on, uh, in other uh, university, for example, the Vrij uh, Universiteit van Brussel. Okay, Len, you were already opening here, so go ahead, uh, perfect. Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me, hear me right? Yes. 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 Great. So, all right. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the invitation. Um, I will yeah, slightly uh, tell you something about cortisol and the HA ratio in health and longevity and some sh a short um, therapeutic uh, perspectives. So indeed, I will talk about three things, cortisol and DHA ratio, the cocktail of healthy aging, cortisol, cortisol and DHA health and longevity, and then some uh, therapeutics. And as you will, as uh, DDA already uh, said, I'm a big proposed, proponent and PhD researcher about lifestyle uh, or functional medicine. Um, so throughout the presentation, I will drop some readily impl implementable uh, lifestyle strategies to, yeah, to improve cortisol and uh, DHA ratio. So first, the cocktail of healthy aging, what is it? So I often describe this ratio in uh, like cortisol, um, a cocktail of healthy aging. So because during aging, endocrine markers increasingly get challenged due to age-related uh, alterations to the uh, HPA axis, the balance of these hormones may be challenged uh, in aging. The first ingredient of the cocktail is cortisol, widely known as a stress hormone, Optimal uh, amounts of cortisol can be life-saving and crucial uh, to reducing, for example, inflammation, but it negatively impacts uh, health when the, the hormone is chronically elevated. When we age, cortisol rises and the rhythmicity of the diurnal output uh, gets challenged because yeah, we actually want sharp rises when we wake up and it should gradu uh, gradually uh, decline uh, during the day. And older adults display an increased uh, daily cortisol output, a blunted cortisol awakening response, and a flatter diurnal profile, but I will talk about that later. The second ingredient is DHEA. It's, um, stereo, uh, it's also a steroid hormone and gets converted into hormones uh, yeah, such as testosterone and estrogen. DHEA production gradually increases in early life, peaks during the or 20s and then steadily decreases uh, into old age. And by the age of 80, uh, the HEA levels fall by as much as 80 or 90% compared to what they were in uh, young adulthood. So generally, a good ratio lower in cortisol and higher in the HEA is seen in physically active, healthy, resilient, happy people. And with my recently published uh, systematic review, we found that physical activity is likely to improve the, the cocktail um, by balancing the ingredients towards less cortisol and more DHEA. So as you see, uh, my systematic review, uh, we uh, reviewed intervention and observational studies about physical activity and cortisol and DHEA. Uh, and we found that actually any exercise, as long as the adults all older adults like it and maintain it over a longer per period of time that any exercise protocol actually uh, could benefit the, uh, the aging pathway. Also, uh, so actually some studies found no effects on cortisol, but the general consensus is that an active lifestyle certainly improves the HEA and then counterbalances the negative effects of cortisol. So the HEA displays, in this case, a uh, neuroprotective action. So I will shortly go about cortisol and DHEA in health and longevity. First, let's discuss cortisol shortly. So as I mentioned before, cortisol is absolutely necessary for survival, implicated in immune regulation and stress regulation or stress reactivity. But when it's chronically dysregulated, then it becomes detrimental to health. And it has a circadian rhythmicity, as you see. So uh, when you wake up in the first hour, you have a cortisol awakening response. And in the evening, it should uh, decline gradually. But now when, uh, 
when it's disrupted, um, you have you get yeah it's chronically disrupted also uh, anyway uh, when you age, but also in chronic disease, depression, uh, and burnout. So you get yeah all kinds of um, uh, alterations of the cortisol slope. But as uh, we found in our systematic review, that um, physical activity may regulate the cortisol output. Um, and we actually know it already uh, in our own lives, then physical activity, if we did physical activity, then uh, we are less often less stressed. Physical activity may also regulate cortisol and sleep. Uh, in another systematic review, so we, we took a look uh, we took a look at this. Um, and we know also in our own lives that when we're stressed, we can't seem to fall asleep. And also from lab studies, we see that cortisol affects uh, or deep sleep phases. So indeed, cortisol and sleep are interrelated and may both be influenced by physical activity. There seems to be reciprocal interactions between the HPA axis and sleep regulation. One, the HPA axis is implicated in sleep regulation and sleep wake cycles. So more stress is worse sleep. Sleep hygiene and circadian rhythmicity are proven to impact cortisol profiles and stress reactivity. Less sleep, you, know, you notice that you get more stress the next day. So how does physical activity impact stress and cortisol? Well, physical activity releases all kinds of good hormones and interacts, for example, with interleukins. And there is a mindfulness part also uh, when you're doing some uh, exercise. And why is it good for sleep hygiene? Well, physical activity synchronizes the sleep-wake cycles and also through body clocks, so the main central clocks, but also through uh, muscle clocks and releases hormones such as interleukin uh, 15, which benefits uh, bone mass and sleep. Now about DHEA specifically. DHEA has many effects in both men and women that opposes the deleterious effects of normal aging. Uh, DHEA modulates endothelial function, reduces inflammation, improves insulin sensitivity. We'll come back to that later. Improves blood, blood flow, etc. Declining DHEA levels are associated with a greater likelihood of death or disease in observational studies. So implementing, supplementing it would be a logical approach. However, only weak support for DHEA as a therapeutic compound has been demonstrated. Um, for example, for postmenopausal uh, post women, cardiovascular health, uh, brain health, IVS, and I saw some about uh, autoimmune disorders also with possible adverse health effects. However, it does, it does show interesting benefits to tackle insulin uh, sensitivity, which we'll discuss in the next few slides. And I was uh, looking at it more closely today, and there are interesting mouse studies also that do uh, show promising uh, results, uh, for example, on the immune system and even on the gut microbiome, uh, which ties into the hallmarks of aging. So yeah, maybe there is some future approaches that could benefit uh, aging in humans. It stays around, so I guess uh, there's some benefit to it. All right, so now I'll show, shortly discuss a few uh, therapeutics. Firstly, as I'm a big fan of, uh, there are some uh, behavioral strategies that uh, are important, um, like stress resiliency, uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction, movement and breathing like Tai Chi, yoga, uh, social support, physical activity, uh, as we showed in our systematic review, and so on. Uh, now, about DHEA supplementation. For this, I take the TRIM study as an example. They successfully try to regenerate the thymus, as they, and as they suggest, the thymus or thymus uh, involution is a major cause of immunosenescent aging cascades. So the involution is a genetically programmed aging process uh, via which the thymus undergoes a prog progressive reduction in size due to loss of uh, thymic epithelial cells and decrease the maturation of T cells, which is important for immune functioning. 
And they wanted to investigate if using recommend a uh, recombinant human growth hormone prevents signs of immunosenescence in healthy male populations of 50 to 50, uh, 65 years old. And they added uh, DHEA and uh, metformin for the insulin lower, lowering effects. Now for the TRIMEX study, they planned two arms uh, with more participants, males and females, and include minority groups as you are all aware of. Uh, so again, they will use the DHEA to counterbalance the diabetogenic effects of growth hormone. Um, in a possible not yet existing uh, future trim XX study, they could pay attention to the cortisol DHA ratio because we know that chronically elevated cortisol is associated with insulin resistance. So by implementing cortisol regula regulatory strategies, they could attack the diabetogenic effects of growth hormone and also influence inflammation, thus lowering uh, the cortisol DHA ratio. So to sum, cortisol DHA ratio does play a role in health and longevity. Aging brings challenges to the balance between these hormones. Higher DHEA and lower cortisol is seen in healthy aging. DHEA is a fountain of youth, but for now, mostly behavioral intervention to improve these levels seem to be widely accepted as a strategy to do so, yeah, improve these levels. The TRIM study used a DHEA supplement uh, for a lot of reasons, but mainly for to increase, increase insulin sensitivity. And don't forget, cortisol, uh, chronically elevated uh, cortisol or better dysregulated cortisol levels drive inflammatory cascades and contribute to insulin resistance, which is a key marking in uh, health and longevity. So as I'm a PhD student, I couldn't have done uh, the research on my own. So um, I saw my Acting professor is uh, Anna Whitaker from the University of Stirling. Thank you. Thank you, Len. Uh, I will ask, uh, I will read a question uh, uh, asked by uh, uh, Edouard, who is, uh, who is following. Uh, questions around the DHAI since a long time. So you write that DHEA sorry, is beneficial for healthy aging, but despite many studies, there is not such a clear, clear such a clear thing, sorry. My survival of the studies of DHEA with low and high doses fail to extend life. The TRIM study with the anti-diabetic study is the only quite striking good use. So, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. I, I do you think about saying yeah. it's beneficial is uh, misleading because we do not know any any attempt of uh, demonstrating the causality failed. Uh, it's a correlation, the HA decreases uh, in life, uh, but that's all. That's all we have a correlation with time, with age. Um, cortisol, what you explained, is very well known with uh, sleep and uh, and the, the daily pattern and the, the stress uh, for DHEA that in fact even is not doesn't exist in mice. Um, um, it is a, a big question mark of whether it really does something um, and except making maybe a small hair grow. That's why you may not want to have it in creams, um, in facial creams. Uh, so there is a big market around DHEA but uh, it's very doubtful of uh, big effects on it. And the TRIM study that use, uh, uses its anti-diabetic uh, uh, thing, yes, uses a, a good aspect of it. Um, so th what I want to say is globally, it's difficult to say it's beneficial. And there has been so many studies um, with financial interests trying to show the effect that I just, I just feel the need to put a small warning on Decipher, yeah. deciphering things all right yeah absolutely it's only it, it's only shows uh, indeed correlations or associations and um but and and yeah indeed i totally agree and i, I think i express myself or only if i say beneficial yes, 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 yes. because it's an association but and it strikes me that they continue to do research about the hea while a lot of 
yeah, as, as you say, it's only association. So, but maybe there is still something in it because they continue to do research about it, but I, I don't know. Your patents, there is marketing. But uh, if I may say something, uh, there, there is no patent possible on DHEA itself, no? Or well, there, you... there is a German, there is a German um, company that did something with it and made it like, yeah, they, they got a lot of money out of it. So I, yeah. it's something to do. Yeah, should we read it? It's, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh...